Let me introduce myself. I'm Brian Hickman. This is my son, Eric. Uh, about four years ago, when he was 16, he kind of came up and says, Dad, he says, I want to start a ministry for teens. And at that point in time, uh, he was in academy, and he was uh, having an opportunity to use video equipment and was learning how to do that at that point. And uh, he says, there's not enough Christian media content out there on the Internet. That's, that was from his perspective. So he wanted to create a ministry which created media for teens. Okay? And uh, the very first thing I thought was, how much is this going to cost me? Because, you know, that's, that's generally where it's at. Because it can become, you know, when you start thinking video and equipment, it's not the cheapest thing that you can do. And, uh, but when he started outlining what he wanted to do, I says, you know, I cannot discourage. I've got to encourage and become involved. So at that point, since we we've, we've call ourselves co-founders, we work together. And it's really been great because I get to work with him and he gets to work with me. We have a good relationship in that aspect. And uh, if you ever have those opportunities as a parent, I, I recommend highly that you do that. Take a couple of those handouts there if you don't mind. Um, but anyway, uh, talking about, it was about 15 minutes and we came up with our name, which was Teens Targeted. And primarily what that's about is the fact that teens are targeted today from the media companies, specifically targeting them so that they can generate income from them once they've got them in there. Uh, and there are statistics out there. Uh, most of your R-rated stuff is targeted to teens. That's who they target because if the movie companies and everything can grasp them and pull them in, they've got them for life. Okay? It's very easy to get that stuff today off the web. Very, very easy. Um, so from that aspect, transition, I actually have a whole sermon that I've got set up that, that prefaces what we do. We're not going to do that today, but um, what's happening in a nutshell is they're finding by age 25, about 70% of most teens and youth by age 25 are no longer active in a church, okay? I said, well, the Seventh-day Adventist church is not that way. Well, we're only nine points behind that, okay? 61% of our kids are not being active in a church at the age of 25, and this, this has been a study that's done by the General Conference, um, and they've come up with these statistics to show all of this. And, you know, we've got to do something to get these kids from leaving the church. Well, they're not, I guess you could say leaving the church, but not being active. And their definition of active is going to church one time a month. That's the definition of active. So that's not very much activity. To begin with. To begin with, right. And uh, so from that perspective, um, yes, we have an issue that we need to work with. It's not our church. It's every church involved out there in the world is having the same issues. But some churches are doing a little better job at it than I think than we are. And, um, you know, each church has to look at their speciality at what they think they can do and what's best for their kids. It's hard to get one program that takes care of everything. But the ultimate goal, what the General Conference came up with, they can come up with as many programs as they have, but those programs are put to use by the local churches. So it takes a local church to make this happen, okay? That means if the local church doesn't get the, t the kids involved, it doesn't matter what the program is, it's not going to happen. Because the conference and them, they can't do it themselves. It takes you as a layperson getting interested out there and doing that. And it's hard work. Let me tell you, it is very hard work. Um, so, anyway, a little bit of my background. I work um, in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Uh, I'm a subcontractor to the Department of Energy. Um, I have about 
20 plus years of youth ministry and I've been involved very heavily in Pathfinders. In fact, my son and I, we actually do the live sound for the Pathfinder Camporee every year. We've done it now for about the past five, years, five, six years, five or six years and I did it before him. I've done it at least probably four or five years before that uh, where we actually go down and we do that. And what we try to do is get kids involved with us when we go down there and do that, trying to teach them. Uh, have over 10 years of live sound and recording. We're, we actually have a small recording studio within our home where uh, opportunities with kids, our goal is to give them an opportunity to come in and, and record and have that experience and see if that's what they would like to do. He's got me as a hobbyist musician. I'm there, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, uh, I enjoy, I play several instruments. I enjoy music. Music is very powerful. Uh, That's the reason we're talking about it today. Yeah, because we do, we, we do a lot of music. A lot of My son, he graduates this year uh, with a degree in IT uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, during that time, he's actually worked for a company called ProRep, and he set up their whole IT structure. Uh, the guy's a little nervous right now because when he graduates, he knows he's going to have to give him a raise to try to keep him around. So. You know how that goes. <clears throat> He's worked in, around live sound and video uh, through Academy and on. He's actually gone to, uh, he took training uh, at a recording studio for a year, actually passed that in Knoxville. So he actually worked in an actual recording studio and he still has interaction with that gentleman also, has questions he can talk to. Um, Photography is one of his hobbies, and um, he loves doing photography. Uh, so as you can see, we've kind of got some things in our background that kind of falls in place and that we like doing what we're doing here. Let's look at our ministry, Teens Targeted. It is a Christian nonprofit youth ministry, and we're dedicated to pointing teens to Jesus Christ and His love. We are not yet a 501c3. We have our paperwork together. We're about ready to send that in so that we can become a 501c3. Once we get that recognition, that helps us a whole lot uh, as being a nonprofit. Um, we have media ministry, ministry training, and we have a local ministry. Um, before we get into this, uh, we do the radio station. We do have a radio station. It's been running for approximately two years. That's what the red card is. And if you pick up this card that you've got in your hands here, uh, if you look on the back, it's got a QR code. And you are up. And uh, anybody that's got a cell phone or whatever, if you scan that code, it'll take you right to the radio station. Okay. Also, if you search the web out there and just type in Google Teens Targeted, we will come right up. We'll be at the top of that, that list. And you can actually log into our website. At some point, we'll probably show you the website here in a little bit. Uh, Eric has done all the way. He's our technical guy, so I let him do all the technical stuff. And that's what you're going to find out with these kids. You're going to say, can you do this? And for some reason, it's built in. Okay? Well, it's, one of, it's one of those things that's built in today. You and I, you know, I never had computers when I went to school. I had to learn it after the fact, you know. But it's because I took an interest and I went back and got my degree and did that. But these kids, it just seems like when they're born, it's, it's right there already. You hand them the phone, they already know how to do whatever, you know. And if I want it set up, I just hand it to him and he takes care of it for me. That's good. Sometimes it's bad, I guess. Because then you don't learn uh, in that aspect. We're going to really talk about some of the basics and everything as we get started in your handouts as uh, you look here. Um, but let me tell you about one thing we've done this year. Uh, we do do the radio, but we stepped out in faith and we decided to get involved in our local community. Uh, that's another good thing you need to get your kids involved in. If they get involved in radio and everything, is to get them actively involved also in local community. Um, we actually stepped out and we started a small Christian basketball league just for kids. And um, I thought we were going to get 50 to 75 kids 
and I was going to be happy. Uh, and this is in Crossville, Tennessee. We're just in the middle of nowhere. And we got 147 kids that signed up for that. Okay. Had 17 teams. Um, it actually overfilled us. It was more kids than we really could handle, but we decided to take it. We got kids from four years of age up through 18 years of age. Uh, we play the games on Saturday night. Uh, they're used to Saturday morning. So all my coaches are not Adventist. In fact, there's only three or four of us that are Adventists that's involved in the organizational structure. Everything else is not Adventists that are helping us. Um, we've had a discussion about the Sabbath uh, with the coaches. It was interesting because they could not understand that we worship a 24-hour period. To them, they can go to church, afternoon, do whatever. And they were questioning me, well, why after church? Why can't we start playing basketball? You know. And so from that, it led into a lot of things that we got to share our faith with the local community people. And they're starting to understand who we are as Adventists. I have over 500 people coming into my church area every Saturday night, okay? And every Saturday night, faithfully, those 500 people show up, and we have opportunity. We bought over $800 worth of uh, material that was related to kids that we've put on tables, and kids are taking them home, books, everything. In fact, we, we got lucky. One of our church members actually wrote... Uh, a kid's um, daily book, what do you call those? Devotional. A devotional book. And he's a member of our, our church, Elder Charles Case. I don't know if anybody knows him. Anyway, I had him come in one night, and he sat down, and he signed all the books for the kids. And they loved it. They, actually, they just loved it to death. And uh, so we're actually getting material in the hands of people, and they're asking for it. Instead of me having to go knock on their door, they're asking me for it. And uh, I've already had times where people have sat down, asked me, what do Adventists believe? And I get to share. I've actually had a Baptist pastor sit in my house and say, you know, really Sabbath is the true Sabbath. You know, so it's opening the doors. We're becoming friends. We call it friendship evangelism. Okay. Your teens can do the same thing with friendship evangelism. And that's what it's about. If they get involved in something, whatever they do at their church, Friendship evangelism. Get your friends in that's in the community. Get them involved. They'll come. They'll come and be involved. Okay? Um, Don't mean to cover that? Yeah, well, I'm going to kind of step out and let my son kind of take from this. I get long-winded sometimes, so he has to tell me to be quiet. So, so I understand that. Yeah. I don't know if much of you have his smartphones, but if you do, there's our Twitter and our Facebook. You're more than welcome to... Check that out and check out our website. Does anybody Do Twitter you? and Facebook in here? Okay. There we go. There we go. We got, we, got, we got a couple. We got a couple. If we had kids in here, every one of their hands would be up. You know? Um, we're going to get started with talking a little bit about where inter Internet radio originated from. Um, ironically, obviously, radio has been around for a long time. I mean, for almost more than 100 years. And... Um, the spawn of internet radio kind of happened with the spawn of the internet. Um, in 1993, Carl Malmud broadcasted the first internet radio show, and that's actually a picture of him right there. He broadcasted uh, an internet show about computers. Um, that was the first syndicated uh, radio show on the internet. Now, I want to pause here and just note what actually, when we talk about internet radio, what we're talking about. Um, a lot of people think Pandora's internet radio, it is a, for, a form of uh, internet radio, Spotify, music streaming services. They're a form of internet radio, but they're not the kind we're talking about. We're talking about like traditional FM radio, except it's being streamed on the internet. Um, so it's a continuous uh, stream of content. Um, it's also known as webcasting. Now, as my dad mentioned, Music is a very important aspect of radio, at least if you're doing music radio. There's a lot of talk radio, that kind of stuff like that. But if you're doing music, I thought it's important to know some stuff about the music industry. Um, according to AccuStream, 
the online music radio, so that, that's no FM, that's just entirely online music, um, generated almost $4.85 billion, or billion listening hours in 2007. If you want to visualize that, that picture there, it has pallets, and each of um, the little packets there have got $100 bills, um, and that's about a billion. So you need about four or five of those to figure out what the total listening hours of internet radio was in 2007. That's almost seven years old. Actually, it's more than that now, but eight years now, yeah. Actually, I want to cover the bottom part two here. And the worldwide music industry revenues in 2011 were just about $67.6 .6 billion. So music is something that's very, very big. Um, it's one of the biggest media industries in the world underneath the film industry. Music in the Bible is something that's very, very important. Um, I know whenever I go to church, music is something that's very important to the worship experience. And so if, if we can kind of come at it from an angle of providing content for people, music that encourages a spiritual um, atmosphere in their lives, then to me that's something that's really important. Teens listen to a lot of music, to be quite frank. 56% um, of teens have uh, used radio to find new music on their phones. 54% <coughs> have music player apps on their smartphones. 47% um, have radio applications on their smartphones, and then 20% have store applications that they can buy music through. Um, some people don't think you know, teens can really drive a music industry, but they do. Uh, it, I don't know if you guys have heard of MTV. They're a, a secular um, organization that plays a lot of just general secular music. And their entire media distribution arm is based off of marketing to young people. Um, so. Young people, there's a market for it. It's, it can be really important, it can be powerful, and it's definitely something we want to look at. Now, this is something I wanted to touch on when my dad was mentioning about this local sports league. Um, the key was making relationships with people, making friendships. Radio is an, an excellent way of doing that. It gives us the capability to reach out to people, to share a message with people. Um, over the internet, it gives us the capability to do that all over the world. Now, if you're an FM, all over your local area. Um, I think it's something that's really important. Um, it's a perfect way to reach many different kinds of people. Also to note, um, radio is, it's not a, it's a one-way conversation, but that's okay in a way. Um, it's designed to plant seeds. You know, a lot of people don't see the results of their work sometimes. And radio, it can be that way. You know, are people listening to my station? Are people enjoying what I'm, what I'm uh, presenting? We got an email. Well, first, before I say that, um, we've been running the station since about the beginning. This is about two years ago. It's been since about 2000. It's in, fe in February. February. Yeah. yeah, in February would be about two years. And um, we hadn't got a lot of response from people on the Internet. Uh, but we kept doing and kept doing it, and eventually we, we started receiving a few responses more and more. We have received one just about a, week, um, about a month ago from a lady in Russia who says her whole family listens to our radio station and wake, wakes up to it every morning. Not Christian, not really connected with that lifestyle, but they listen to our radio station every morning. Their kids love it. They wanted to get more information. Now I'm going to quickly cover some basics of stuff that's on your one of your handouts is this workshop handout. A lot of people they get kind of get confused at what can I do to make stuff? What do I what do I what do I share, you know? Um, one way to find a lot of information, stuff to put on your station beyond music, we'll get to music here in a second, um, is Audioverse. How many of you guys have heard of Audioverse? I'm sure a lot of you have. It's a really great um, website. Um, all, the, all the sermons are Creative Commons, which means you can download them, share them to anybody you want without any licensing restrictions. Um, and we actually play a lot of Audioverse sermons on our uh, station on the weekends. 
PSAs, public service announcements. If you're really kind of in the rut trying to find something, you can't find it, um, the government pays billions of dollars every year to fund organizations to make public service announcements. And these are things like against bullying or against uh, uh, promoting positive uh, things in, in the community, not necessarily religious, but positive things that you can help people with. Um, also, and this is where the big one is, is DIY programs. You guys all kind of come from different backgrounds, uh, maybe from a different church, and your church may have a specific um, area it likes to focus on, whether it be health or uh, a, a, another form of evangelism, whatever. Um, you can create your own programs. Getting a simple microphone, um, you can buy one of those now for 79 bucks, plug it right into your computer and record stuff that's really simple um, and easy to use. It can be more complicated trying to structure those programs, but we'll get into that a little bit later. You know, we're really, our radio station mainly is, mainly plays music. Uh, we do have a lot of programs, but um, our main broadcast uh, section is music. Um, we fortunately have found a way to get a lot of free music, just like FM stations do just contacting direct to the record labels and asking them, we'd like to play your music, and they'll send it to you for free. So you don't have to pay for it, which is really great. Now, you contact them that way usually. Is that an email contact? Email. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny you ask that because you would think they would have a, a dedicated system to do it, but most of the time you just email them. Um, the process we do, and that's what this picture of the software up here is up there, um, and I'll actually show you that a little bit later. Why don't you go ahead? Um, audio booths. Yes. I contacted them to try to get permission to use one of the Bible, uh, audio Bibles. Mm -hmm. And I called them, I emailed them, and they just kind of blew me off, never responded to Really? Them. So how, how do you get permission to use their stuff? Well, um, I, I'm not aware about their audio Bibles. Uh, maybe they have a separate section for that, but their sermons... Their sermons, they've got a little, um, a little, some text right below the, where you play the sermon, and it has a little copyright information. And all the ones on Audioverse are copyrighted under something called Creative Commons, which is just a form of a license. You know, whenever someone produces a work, they have to license that work to distribute it. Um, it simply what it means is it gives um, the public domain the right to use that work to copy it without having to pay royalties on it. So essentially you get it for free. You can't change it, but um, as far as I know, everything under there, if it's, if it's got that license, you can use it. So Go ahead. When you, when you send an email to them, you would say, our church or whatever, we're interested in setting up an internet radio for our young people. To all, you gotta, all you got to say is we're a radio station and I want to get your latest Christian tracks for, for promo. Right. For, Right. Right. Um, and, and so you may already be doing that. Um, well, if we could reach them. Then. Right. Well, yeah. Well, and you're using other stuff. Right, right. Are you using all public domain at this point, or are you using copyrighted music? We're using copyrighted music, and we pay the fees. Okay, so you're, okay. you're already ahead of the game. Three folks that... Uh, and we've got that three of you radio. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. The, the, yeah. Three of you end does their license a little bit differently, right. but... You're already 90% well, we, there. Well, we asked uh, Doug, ba Doug Batchelor. There were some certain programs that we wanted to use from him because they were very related to what teens dealt with on a daily basis. And they're like, they would let us use whatever, but we couldn't use any, th any of their videos and strip the audio out. All we could use was whatever audio that they did, but we couldn't touch any of the videos. So some of them have their specific what they allow you to do uh, on that. We do find that most of the Adventist-based faith ministries, there's not really a problem in using their information. Well, they're, yes. they're, they're pretty free. As long as you ask them, they'll come back and they'll say, yeah, use them, use them. Uh, we use uh, your story hour. They have a segment they've done for teens. Simple email, we sent it. Boy, we got it back and they said, hey, here, we're going to send you our high you know, quality versions and everything, and they sent it right to us. And so we can use them anytime we want um, from that aspect. Uh, 
So most of them generally will get back with you as a general rule, but our ministries run on a lot less people than the average ministry, so time frame, sometime it can take a while for it to take place. I know it did with Doug Bachelors. It, yeah. it took, took, us, took about a month before we got that back. But um, in your question to the audio verse, um, I can sit down after, it's, after we're done. I'll have a little period before and show you kind of that little section there. You'll be able to determine for yourself. Right. Um, but to answer you, typically just send them an email. Um, that's why I wanted to list some of these companies up here. Uh, I've got a, and I'll show you this here in a few minutes, but if you're ever unsure, um, and like say you have a new track, the new track comes out and you want to play it on your station, um, if you get it on CD or if you see it like on Amazon or something like that, They've got, let me see it on here, like on the back of the disc, they'll see the company who produced it. Like this one, for instance, says EMI Christian Music Group. Um, that was one of the labels that did it, as well as Provident and Word Entertainment. So you would email um, Provident, because they actually produce the record, and say, hey, I want to use blah, 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 these tracks. Would you be able to let me use it? Um, and if they, if you email any, any of the four big ones here, um, they, most of them use um, a system called Play and PE, which makes it, it's a program called, uh, sorry, let me say it again, it's called Play MPE, and it's just a little simple, kind of like iTunes application that allows you to get their copyrighted music before they release it, um, and it downloads it to your machine so you can broadcast it. It's Play MPE. It play MPE. I'm going to show you to you here in a second. And the one thing it does is, as you down as it downloads the file and you have that uh, account, it embeds inside that song information about you, so that if that goes out and somebody finds it on a CD that's been burned, they know who to go back to, and and you could lose your account for that. So, so you have to be. I mean, they're getting real real good at tracking this music, okay? And music is one of the most complicated parts of this whole deal. And um, because in choosing what you want to do can make your life easier or hard, but we're gonna show you an easy way that you can do it uh, so you don't have to worry about it for, Here, for internet music. Sorry. Here's an example. Um, Capital Christian Music Group, they're one of the largest um, Christian release organizations that are under Universal. Um, they've got a lot of great music out there, the, the popular stuff. Um, and this is an email I got back from them. Every time they get a new release, they send me an email. This one is Beyond Me from Toby Mac. I got this just two days ago, and I haven't even added it to the station yet. Um, and what you do, let me find my mouse here, is they'll send you a little application and, or a little link, and you can just say, get it now, if it would load here. It may not click. Are you going to get into it? Yeah. Um, you know, we primarily play contemporary Christian because of our target audience, which is teen, or teenagers. Um, if you decide to set up a station, I'll just briefly say, you know, you would have to decide what genre you want to play. Would it be gospel, right. um, acoustic, all different, whatever. I mean, there's so many different genres. Right. What, whatever we're doing can apply to any, any type of an internet radio station. There's some decisions you will have to make based upon what you want to do. Yeah. Okay. We, we've chosen this direction toward the teens. Is all these done. same companies, those four major record labels, they release all the music you ever listen to. Um, unless it's specifically Adventist and an independent label or something of that nature, they release everything. They've got Christian sides, they've got rock sides, pop, rap, a whole gamut. So you just contact that specific area, whatever you want to. We're finding with Adventist in. music, there's not a good distribution out there. I mean, it's there is, in, they're, not, they're not represented. They're so. not represented. You generally have to go to each individual one Which and talk fine. to them. Uh, so you have to do a little more legwork with the Adventist on that. Well, let's, while he's doing that, pick up the one, right one sheet. And we'll kind of start, because we've kind of got it combined here. It says station setup at the very top, okay? Primarily... As you're looking to want to do, if you want to do a radio station, one of the first things we've kind of wrote down here a 15-step process of what you probably would have to go through and think about. The number one is you've got to think of your station's audience. Who are the people that are you wanting to reach? Uh, 
I'm sorry, but in today's world, there's no way you can create a radio station that will reach everybody. It doesn't happen. There are so many people out there that's got unique uh, needs that you cannot put in a radio station that will meet them all. That's why some churches will have four and five radio stations. And each one of those radio stations are designed to meet needs of a certain demographic group is what it is. And um, so that's where you have to decide what do I want, who do I want to reach? And that can have an effect as to the music and what you want to do. Uh, Number two was decide on your station's genre, which is important because the type of music that demographic wants to listen to, that's very important too. Again, we've chosen a group of about 13 years of age up to roughly 25, and we've seen it's gone over it, but that's our target group, okay? That's the group we're trying to reach to at that point. Uh, and you're going to have to ter- determine a budget. The, there's no way to do it for free. It's just in today's world, there's no way you can do it for free. Thankfully, it's a lot but less it's cheaper. expensive than yeah. FM radio. And, and we've written some numbers. Stuff. We'll go over that roughly what it's costing us to give you an idea of what we're doing. Okay? Um, you also need to come up with a creative name that fits what you're trying to do. Like ours, Teens Targeted, by the name, you know who we're going after, Right? It's very pointed. It's very, very narrowed. This is who we're after. Um, And that can be a a chore sometimes. Sometimes it just doesn't come right out. Uh, We were lucky. We we had ours within 15 to 20 minutes. But it's because we knew where we wanted to go with that, I think. Um, You need to come up with some type of a website or web presence. And that could be as simple as a Facebook page. That's very Which easy to set. Nice. That's free. It's easy to set up. Uh, you need to have that type of a web presence. Um, number six, um, you're going to have to sit down and uh, decide, do I want to put equipment in my house and do this, or do I want to do it from, does everybody know what the term the cloud is? Have you ever heard that term? Basically what that means is, it's going to reside on somebody else's computer out there somewhere else. That professionally managed. And, it, and it's managed by them and everything. And I pay them a fee to take care of all of that. I don't have to mess with it, okay, um, by doing that. And there are some positives and negatives from that. Uh, once you do that, then you've got to have what they call playout software, which on our machine we use uh, Sam Broadcaster. And Sam Broadcaster is actually used in actual radio stations, and that's what allows them to play their music, be able to cue things up, press buttons, play this PSA, play this whatever. You can so do you, it, so you you can do it manually to... or you can do it automatically. So you, so you basically don't have to sit behind a computer for 24 hours right. and mix your music, I mean, because who has the time for that? It no, does it automatically. Do you have a pricing for that, though? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get more into that. We're, we're trying to do a general overview initially, and then we'll come back and... As you ask questions, we can really get you the information that you want um, from that. Um, then you're going to have to purchase. Yes, sir. Does that play out kind of software similar to Simeon? Yes. Radios? Yes. yes. Very similar. That, that's, yes. It's the automation software. It's the automation software. And there's several different versions out there. Like Simeon, is that what you guys are using? Yeah. See, that's, particular, that's more a more professional grade unit. Uh, it's typically designed for FM. Um, more media ingesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, they're exactly the same thing. Um, the only reason we mentioned Sam Broadcaster is because it integrates with web streaming services really well. So, so what you buy is dependent upon what you're doing there. Uh, you're going to have to do some type of purchasing of a streaming service. And what that is is you take your little stream and you send it to their computers and then they blast it out to the web. Okay. Uh, and that's because they need to have a very good, strong, backbone internet. And probably you would not be able to afford that kind of money to put that heavy of a backbone into your house. You probably couldn't get it. Uh, they're not really that expensive, um, but, but, they, but they take care of it, okay? Uh, then you're going to determine what music license you want to do. Now, 
There's two ways to do it. Uh, you can let a company do it for you. It's a blanket license. It's called a blanket license. Uh, or you can manually go out there to each one of these companies and you do the record, uh, you purchase it through them and then you got to send them back um, uh, monthly, reports. monthly reports and then you pay your licensing fee accordingly. Okay. The CCLI license that we have for the church covering? No. 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 The CCLI license, that, that covers live performance. Right. So if I wanted to sing. Um, we have one that's webcast performance. Uh, that lets you send it through a webcast. Right. Um, like, for instance. It's still no. Yeah, but, but CCL does not cover copyrighted music. Well, it does. It, it, it Only in live performance for you to uh, make copies of the music, be able to use it in your church. But as on a radio station, it doesn't cover licensing there. Let me give you an example. Like if, if I'm at a church and we're doing videoing and we're even webcasting that video, and we're doing some, a popular worship song, that gives us the right to, first of all, perform it to the people, local audience, and make copies of it and send it out over the web. Now, in nine, or like 2001, Congress passed uh, an act called the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which covers all of web-based radio stations. Um, they're licensed a little bit differently than CCLI and um, FM, and they have to actually go and go through the same process as FM radio uh, and, and get the similar licenses that way. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you go manually, you've got to purchase your ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, and Sound Exchange license. Those are the four companies that you do it differently. Instead of CCLI, you would go through those four companies. Those four companies there. I see. Okay. Uh, then you've got to get your music up. Uh, what we're finding is uh, it's, it's a little harder getting your initial Christian program, wow. depending upon the music that you're getting. Believe it or not, We've generally got mo most of ours through uh, McKay's, McKay's Bookstore and bought them used. Because you can go in there and buy a CD for a buck and a half, two dollars, mm -hmm. and then we take off what we want and we rip it out. Um, you can get it illegally on the web. They call those wares sites. We don't recommend that. Uh, the it's against the law. It's against the law, number one. Number two, the quality of the programming is very, very poor. You want to pull it off the CD to get that quality of program. The only reason we mention that is a lot of people do that. Yeah. Um, so it's not a good idea. But once you get your initial programming out there and up, uh, depending upon the music that you've got, you can go to these sites like he's showing you here show to you get the new second. stuff. And what's good about that is, is that you can actually get music before it's actually sold on the market. So you can actually be playing it on your station before it's available in Walmart or wherever it is. And that's good for them, so that's why they give it to you. And at the same time, it's free to you, so you can, you can have content, okay? Uh, one thing you, you're going to have to do is you're going to have to set up, and this is one of the hardest things to do, depending on your station and how many people you have involved in your station, is the criteria of what allows you to play a song and what allows you not to play a song. I'll, I'll cover that more specifically. And we'll, we'll be sure. more specific, but that is the one number one thing <laughs> that can be the hardest thing that you can do, let me tell you. Uh, then number 12, you set up a station playlist, uh, which is legal according to this act that Eric talked about. And I'll explain that. It'll be simple. Don't worry about then, it. Then uh, you can record some station promotional materials, maybe IDs, those types of deals. These kids will take to that like water. Let me tell you, they love doing that kind of stuff if you get kids involved. They'll run all the electronic gear for you and ever set it up for you. You just have to show up and do what your part is. Uh, then you can start broadcasting and then go and promote your station. Facebook is a good way to promote your station. And that's kind of a process, very simply, on how it takes to get a web radio station up. The length of time to do all of this, you probably can start and have a station going in roughly 30 days. 30 days, you can have it up and it actually out there. You could do it quicker if you have music, but getting music takes some time um, on that. I, I want to go and show you what I had over here. Uh, whenever he was talking about you know, getting music, going to the record labels, I emailed a Capital Music, said, hey, I wanted to get your Christian promos. And they said, that's no problem. They set us up an account with Play MPE, sent me back a password, and it gives me access 
to Trax. Now, this is actually a company, this is actually Curb Records, this is not Capital, but um, they've got three tracks, their most recent tracks that they've, they've released, and all I would have to do is go and uh, click on them, and I could just click a little button down, right here to download it, and you know, I can, I can click play and listen to it. I don't know, you may hear it. You can listen to the track, see if you like the track. If you don't like it, you can decide to not use it or whatever. And you can download the track and play it. Anyway, this track was released, I don't remember, this, these are a little bit older, but it gives you information like on, one second here. There we go. All right. Gives you information on who, when it was released. This was released August 29th of last year, but we got it a few days before that. Um, well, it was actually available on August 29th, but it didn't come out in stores until October 3rd. So it gave you a, about a, a little bit less than a week there to put it and promote it for them. So that's, I think that's a really neat, uh, neat way of doing things. Um, let me go back to my presentation. And, and also, if you saw underneath there, there was more than one thing to choose. They actually put little promos where they actually talk with the artist or whatever, so they can kind of tell what their music about and why they wrote it, their inspiration, those kinds of deals. Sometimes it's kind of good to put that out ahead before you play the song. Uh, and so, you know, I mean, that gives you additional content, and that's all done for free, and they professionally make that up. I mean, it's a way for you to promote that song, get right. more listeners, bring the audience in. And you can play that sometime during the day several times if you wanted to, and that way people look forward to it, you know. But uh, you know, music is really worthless unless you have something to play it back. Um, and here's a few examples of two free options, which are at the top here. Um, we, we've used those, but they don't really work on the current system we're using right now, so we chose not to use those. Uh, but we use Sam Broadcaster. It's kind of like Simeon, like he mentioned. Um, and it allows us to structure our playlist, schedule it, um, give you an example. We play, um, and I'll show you here, we play a, a scheduled system. We, we categorize our music into um, four different categories. Um, this is actually our station right now. I'm remoted into a, a computer um, in New Jersey that runs our station. And this is um, actually what it, what it is. So right now we're playing a track up here. Um, but we have a, a, a select categories of tracks that we can um, from. We've got what we call hits, recurrence, classics, and then Christmas and indie music. Um, hits will be stuff that's just come out probably within the past six months, stuff that we want to play more of. We play twice as much hits than we do anything else because we want that concurrent uh, additional music always being here, the new stuff. Um, then we've got recurrence, which is kind of a year, year and a half old, um, which people can still remember because it just came out last year and it's still great music and, and encouraging. And then we've got classics. We've got classics in this list that are... Uh, That's the old music that just stays around. Yeah, like, it never goes away. You, you and I have our favorite music that was played years ago, right? I mean, we've got like popular tracks like Who Am I, East to West, Voice of Truth, um, a lot of really great music that you remember, and that kind of ties in your old memories of music and ha gives a better experience. Anyway, we have those three major categories. We also got Christmas and Indie. Of course, we don't play Christmas in it right now. Um, so that just kind of sits there. But um, Does well, everybody we, understand Indie, what that term means? It stands for independent. That's for people who create their own CDs. They create all of that themselves in-house. They are not underneath any type of a record deal with anybody. Any one of y'all can produce your own CD and sell it but you would be called independent. That's you still what they have call a record label representing you. Right. Um, We're looking for more of it. We would like to really push the independent a lot more, especially with the teens. So we'd like to encourage teens that's got good musical talent because um, one of our goals is to, uh, through the recording that we're doing with the recording studio is have them come in and experience that. No cost to them. They can experience what it is going in and recording a song and getting it and less helping them get it to a professional level. Then take it, put it out on our station and allow them to hear it out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like to get into more of that. It's just a fact of getting kids 
wanting to come do that because first thing they think about, it, oh man, it's thousands and thousands of dollars to go into a recording studio. Well, we, we're not trying to make money on this deal. That, that's not our goal. Our goal is to give them the experience, get them involved in creating media. And if they've got that musical talent, we'll pull them in, we'll let them do a song or two. We've got another gentleman with us that's a good producer. He even has his own recording studio. And um, we could put it together and let them experience that and uh, be able to do that. And then they can turn around and hear themselves out and they can show their friends and parents. Yes, sir. When you use that kind of talent, mm -hmm. do you have to sign a copyright release? Yes. Yes, you have to. We have because to. instead of, um, unless they're registered with um, Sound Exchange, um, which is one of those companies on point number 10 on station setup, then the only way that I can get a right to use their music is to ask them for it. So, well, these are the teenagers in yes. The well, this is. If I recorded something for you, yeah. I'd yeah. have to sign top right release for you. Yeah. You have to give us permission to use it. Yeah. Yes. Because you own it. Now, if you don't have a copyright on it, that's... That's a little bit different. That's a little different, but we, we recommend that they get copyrights. And then that way it protects them, especially if they've written the music. Okay. Uh, generally, first time, they'll, they'll take a song somebody else has written, and, you know, they'll do it that way. But we would prefer them to write the music and everything. We want it 100% from them as much as we can. We'd love to do a program once a week where we took these indie kids and we just took them out there and we just really promoted them, let people see them. But we just don't have enough people to keep that rolling. It, it'd take right, us a couple right of years. Right now, I think we've got probably less than 20 tracks of independent uh, music. We've got uh, one of my friends, Ruben Hall, he, he, he's actually um, a missionary in Taiwan right now. He used to go to a uh, school at uh, Southwestern Adventist University and he had a friends that, some friends there. He, uh, played with. He, he's in audio like I was, and he would mix uh, an independent band there called Contagious Faith. We play a few of their tracks and a few others. So it, it, it's really cool because the, it's music you haven't heard before, and it's still really good music. So they, they like it. They like to get that independent exposure. But let me, I wanted to go on and continue on what I was talking about. You know, I've got, I play a station ID at the top here. Um, I play a hit track, then a classic track, then another ID, then another hit track, then a recurrent track, and that just rotates um, over time. I went and scheduled that up, but so that, that's how I know that when I'm standing right here, the station's playing, and that's the order it's going to be in. We do a 15-minute block period. We schedule it as a 15-minute block, and that 15-minute rotates. It just goes out there and pulls the music and stuff automatically out of the database. So that's why it sounds like you know, it's different all the time. Yeah. And we have rules. We can only play a song within right a certain that. time frame and stuff like that, and that's all written into this. Um, most of this is all the same to FM radio. The only difference is, one, you know, we're streaming on the Internet, and two, um, s some requirements. Um, you're supposed to um, only, you're only allowed to play, for instance, um, an artist... You can only play a track from one artist, like for instance Matthew West, um, in only one track from one artist in one hour. You don't want to be playing, you know, Matthew West, Matthew West, Matthew West, Matthew West. I've heard this guy too many times, you know, what's up with this? Congress passed a law that I was talking about earlier that said you couldn't uh, do that. Um, the best way i found to do it is set your playlist rules up here. Sam Broadcaster has it all built in. It makes it really simple. You just set in um, your minute um, variables and if you set it to about 120 minutes it doesn't play anything in a, uh, incorrectly and your station won't be delisted which means um, essentially taken off the air and it puts you all uh, keeps you legal which is really simple it's it's all built in it's really simple to do so thankfully it's not something that's crazy yeah go ahead what if you're um, doing a special uh, let's say you have an artist Mm -hmm. You have an interview, and you want to, you know, they come in and say, you know, play a few of my tracks. You have a long interview. Well, you can. You, sorry, you, go ahead. You want to play? Here's his first track. Mm -hmm. Here's his next one. That kind of thing. Another track. You know, you just 
it's an hour to this one artist, and he's right there with you, or she's right there with mm -hmm. you. Well, you can, you can do it two ways. One way is to record it all in one program and say this is one program and then get rights for him to play it. Mm -hmm. And then that's considered all one program. It doesn't fall under it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that would be the best way to do it because to me it kind of sounds like, you know, a, an, uh, uh, an artist special show where, yeah. you know, check yeah. out artist A, whatever, yeah. um, his stuff. So in, in doing that, since you, know, you could record the entire, you know, like all the vo vocals, all that kind of stuff like that, like the interview part of it, record yeah. it all in like one 30-minute program, for instance, right. and then have the tracks in there too and you talk about the stuff. Mm -hmm. If that's all in one physical recording file, mm -hmm. just throw it up. It lists as, you know, it doesn't list as, you know, Bob's cool track. It lists as, you know, so -and -so any music program. hour or a program or something right. like that. So it's, it's a little bit differently. As long as you have the rights to use that music, yeah. you can do it. And if you sign that right, you can do it. And you have to keep those rights on file. Okay, it's just, you know, you just have to you understand good. you're going to have to file all this stuff and keep it in, uh, in a file cabinet. Uh, it's good to have electronic, but it's good to have it in paper just, you know, in case. And we try to do both. There's, there's no requirements to give anything to the government? No, um, it's only if, if you ever go to court for some strange reason, you can produce the documentation, it should cover you at that point. Yeah, I... Yeah. The only thing you have to send to the government <coughs> is if you're use, using um, point number 10, um, those four separate companies, and you're dealing with them directly. But I'm going to show you a, a so much easier way to deal with it. You know, that seems like a lot of paperwork. A monthly report for every single, art, for every single um, company that shows all the tracks you've played, how long they've been played for, who all connected to, you know, that seems complicated because it is. There's a lot easier way to do that, and we're going to explain that here in a minute. Um, actually, I think I can go right into that right now, because yeah. that's right where my next section is. Yeah. We use a company called Live 365. Um, and we've, I think we've been on about every one of them, okay? <laughs> so we're going to save you about a year and a half worth of work, okay, uh, at this point. And that's our major goal in these, is to save you all that work because we've been there and we've done it. And we have pretty much got it where it's working now. And uh, that's the reason our recommendations are going to be what they are, because we know it works. We've been there. We've paid money for things that just haven't worked. And we'll save you some money to not have to do that. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, I know someone mentioned the Pathfinder radio. Yeah. Um, you did. Yeah. They, they stream on Live 365, same platform. Mm -hmm. um, all Live 365 is is a company that provides streaming services and licensing services all in one package. So instead of having to pay those four companies, you pay Live 365 one set fee and they take care of all the rest of it. Um, you don't have to worry about it. All you got to do is stream your music and make sure you've got metadata tags in it and it makes them happy and you can stream all you want. Just and they take care of everything. The paperwork, it, the whole nine yards, you don't have to worry about it. It saves a lot of time. I would probably spend 20 hours a month doing all the paperwork. I spend zero. I, it's, it's awesome. So this is 120 a month fee, right? That's $120 a month about that. It's actually around the range of $104, um, but it used to cost us $120. That's why it was written that. Yeah. You have to put the metadata on or they do? You have to. Yeah, and that's when, as you, as you take your music off the CD and everything I mean, pre and prepare it, in, that... that yeah, it should stay, you shouldn't have to... Whenever I import tracks, 90% of it's already got all the metadata on it. That's providing it's coming from the CD. Right. If you're coming from an album standpoint or old school, you know... It doesn't have it. It doesn't have it, and there's software that's... And, and that's where we were saying the wear sites and all those kinds of deals, it doesn't give you everything that you need. You need to pull it off of CDs. Go ahead. Can you get the personal broadcasting or do you have to do the professional broadcasting? There's two options. There's two options. The only difference from that is they put their professional broadcasting package on iTunes. Um, they put it on a few more of their extracurricular platforms like Roku and stuff like that. It just has a larger distribution. Um, we're on the pro package. We always have been. And I've, we've always been happy with it. We've never tried the personal, but the only difference that when talking with personnel from Life 365 was you don't get iTunes support. But that was something that we wanted, so that's what we did. 
Um, and we looked at the religious, when you look at the pricing strategy in there, the licensing, I think it's the religious uh, pricing uh, nonprofits, what we got ourselves listed as. Okay. Um, talking about the, I, I would like to say something real quick about the met metadata. The only time you would have to add it is it's like he was saying, coming like from an old LP, if you're playing old gospel music from cassette tapes or stuff, you would have to type that stuff in. Um, quick note, if you have a smartphone, Google has an app called, um, it's called Play, Play or something like that. I, I can find it exactly after that. And um, I actually don't have it on my phone. I wish I could show it to you. You just, for instance, put an LP in a record player, um, yeah. play it through a, a music, and then your phone picks it up, and it'll find the metadata online for you. I, I used to have that, and I've used it even with our radio station. When it came up and it didn't have metadata, I just turned my phone on and let it listen to it, and it gave me the metadata. I'd call him and tell him what it was, and he'd take care of it. And I just loaded in. And loaded in. And at also, that point. a really neat feature of Sam Broadcaster is it'll search Amazon um, and listen to the track and search Amazon and automatically throw it in. I have not had to manually type in any metadata um, except maybe once. It's all been able to find it automatically. Yeah, no, it saves a lot of time um, because um, what happens is Live 365, the reason why they require that, Live 365 listens to the metadata, records that track, so they know what track you're playing, so they'll <coughs> So they know what track you're playing, so they know um, who to charge and who to give out the money to and stuff for all that licensing stuff, which is fortunately you don't have to worry about. I'm going to go ahead and put back on my uh, presentation here. <coughs> and we're almost to the end, so. So, just to recap kind of what we've covered, um, Blanket Music Licensing, Life 365. <coughs> Another company that's out there that does the same thing is streamlicensing.com. Um, they're a lot cheaper, but they don't provide any streaming services. Um, you would have to go through a separate company to do that. Stream Licensing, actually I think it's just streamlicensing.com and that will take you right to it. Um, <coughs> they have a little simple fill out form, fill out information about your organization, it will give you how much it will cost. Um, and that's just, you know, if you want music licensing. Of course, you could avoid all music licensing and just play talk radio if you wanted to. That's totally up to you guys. Talk radio, because, you know, there's no licensing required in talk radio except, you know, can I use your voice on the radio? And there's some audio streaming companies. But I want to show you this next diagram right here. This is kind of how it's all set up. You've got a broadcast computer running your broadcast software, in this case we recommend Sam Broadcaster. Um, you send a single stream to uh, a streaming server. If it's live through 65, they give you an IP address, a little address you put into your software, streams it right up to their system, and then all their listeners can hear it. What kind of bandwidth are you talking about? Um, it's pretty limited. Your upload um, should be right around one megabit. Um, most um, internet providers definitely provide that. Um, there could be some rural be, companies, you know, that could be DSL. a little shaky. You, you can't do it on, um, sorry, go ahead. Did you, say, did you have something? No, no, oh, no, sorry. No. Now, you can't do it on some of the really, you know, cheap, cheap internet plans that you would get, like up in Crossville. But, um, <laughs> but uh, fortunately, we're in an area that gets a reasonably priced plan. But um, Yeah, we're actually on a business class in our location. We just lucked out because we're by the main road that's got fiber. So we're actually on a business class uh, and that's what kind of saves us. But uh, we, we really slow the internet down in our house because we got so many people on it. You're paying a business rate. Yes, yes, yeah. Rate. Yeah, ours is costing us roughly about $90 a month for what we're doing. It's what we're paying. Now that's just <clears throat> internet that we use. That's just um, internet we use there at the it doesn't have to be, no. It doesn't have to be. It's just we wanted more than just the basic. I mean, we did, we did more than just the streaming. We, right. we do a lot of other st stuff that we just needed for us. Yeah, go ahead. Is Life 63 doing 128? Yes. Yes. So Every, are you broadcasting from yes. this at 128? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no buffering? 
No, it's great. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, you know, that's a good point you bring up because you know, in the past, whenever you were streaming audio over the internet, whenever the internet was a little bit slower, um, past year, you know, five years ago, uh, you wanted to listen to it on your cell phone, data on their cell phone, it was really slow compared to what it was today. So you would have to stream <clears throat> lower bit rates and all this kind of other kind of stuff, and it would be complicated to set up. Now, Live 365 just streams in one. Most people's data connections are fast enough to handle it. Now, the 128K, what he's talking about is the quality of the music that you got. Uh, we originally started, they, only, they offered 64. Yeah. Uh, now they have pushed their basic up to 128, so you get it automatically. And they've doubled the hours that we have from 500 to 1,000, and then they cut our costs. We just got that, what, about three weeks ago. Uh, they came to us and said, hey, we're cutting costs. You've been with us so long, so they, they gave us a break. So which instead of paying the 120 a month, we're down to 104 now, which, you know, $16 a month, that, saves you $16 a month. <clears throat> What's the maximum listener you have on there? Oh, uh, we can have up to um, oh, it's it's a thousand total listening hours is what we're rated at. But if you go above that, you just pay a, um, a fee, like a kind of the same way cell phones do per cent minute. Um, if system. we go overage, if we so they switch you over and just keep it. Yeah, they just pay a little bit extra. Um, actually, on a previous plan, we had done that, right. but it was, it was so affordable, we didn't even upgrade. It was cheaper for us to pay the overage than it was to go up to the next plan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when I did the math, I said, why go to the next plan? I said, it's so much cheaper to pay, pay the overage. Uh, so I don't know if they hadn't done their math or what, but when I did the math, it was cheaper for us not to go to the next plan. So we didn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was good because some months we were over, some months we were not over. You know, once you buy that basic, whatever you're at, you pay for that no matter whether you use it or not. Okay. So, yeah, that... You don't know how much you're going to be broadcasting. Uh, we know an average. Um, we, we've got enough statistics, but in the beginning, we didn't know what we were going to have. So we, you can have dead space and it's okay? Well, Absolutely. it's not dead space. It's just people listening to you. It's not listening to you. So that, just that doesn't not, count against you. So if, yeah. If nobody's listening, they don't charge you for that time. No. That's right. Well... well, well you pay your basic rate. If I'm going to pay $104 a month whether a person listens to me or not because I sign a contract with them. Uh, if well, I... $3,000 an hour. Right. $3,000 on $109 a month. Yeah, it might be $3,000. It may not be $1,000. I don't remember what it was. Uh, $1,000 is $39. You can do a $39 a month for $1,000. Okay. Well, we haven't looked at that. It's just we've been so busy doing the other stuff. Um, well, I'm just saying for us. For for our base for our basic you know we're we're on the we're still on the basic uh, pro whatever it is uh, we get those hours. Well, what it, what it is though too is thirty nine dollars a month is just the streaming part. The way Life three sixty five does it is even though they list that price out there, the hundred nine dollars includes a two two separate prices thirty nine dollars and sixty five dollars. Thirty nine dollars is the actual physical streaming. The sixty five dollars. Is the licensing? Is you got to pay the licensing fee. So that way, okay. you could go in and just pay the thirty-nine bucks and just do talk radio. And don't have to worry about the licensing. Right. Their licensing feature. Mm -hmm. But one hundred and nine dollars together is that licensing do you and pay the streaming. The, the ninety-nine dollar a month pro talk package. Do you do the talk package at all? Is that uh, additional? No, ours is like the pro broadcaster. It's just like pro. I think it's just called like the pro tier. Pro one. Is pro. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what we do. But I mean, I'm just asking if you were going to do interviews. Mm -hmm. Pastoral kids talking to kids. Right. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're not going to talk, if you're not going to do any music whatsoever, you're just going to do straight talk. You don't have to worry about. You could do the thirty-nine dollar deal, and that would be fine. Yeah. Because there's no licensing that you have to worry about. Now, dollar for dollar, it's cheaper to buy their licensing package than to go out and talk to each one of these, because they charge you per month. Uh, with the BMI and all of them, you've got to pay them up front, and they're on an average of about between two to three hundred dollars each up front. Uh, yeah, know, depending on which one. You're depending on, on which one you use, and and you got to pay all that up front. But it's cheaper for us just to pay the per month fee of sixty-five dollars, and when you do the math, we're coming out cheaper, really, the and, way we're and, doing it. And that's because Live Through Sixty Five streams three thousand other stations. Um, so they buy a bulk piece of the license pie and just distribute that out. Right. But um, 
Anyway, long story short, if you don't want licensing, you don't have to pay for it, which is great. Um, I wanted to go back in here and just... Second will. Sorry. I go back in here and just show something. So once you hit to the server, this is all you're responsible for. Life 365 takes it and sends it out to all the clients. You know, it just shows laptops here, but they've got a huge platform. They stream out to your PC on Android, iPhone, iPad, Roku, lots of internet radio directories. If you're on the pro package, um, iTunes, as well as a, a multitude <coughs> of other actual physical hardware devices. We went to 128K on this last upgrade, so that qualifies us for iTunes. So we just requested to go onto iTunes. They sent us an email back. They say, you understand that the average person that goes on iTunes generally goes over what their basic hours are because that's how much more market area is available, which we're hoping for. So uh, we're hoping we're going to have to pay overages because that means we've got more people listening. Uh, so, but you have to sign a minimum of a six-month contract to be on iTunes. So what they're letting us know is that for six months we've got to stay there, but we can not eventually at the end of that six months, if it's too much money, we think it's too much, we have the right to, to drop it at that point. Okay? So just because they offer it doesn't mean you have to take it. You know, it's whatever your budgetary needs are. Did you have a question? Yeah, um, he had mentioned something. Mm -hmm. Life 365. Mm -hmm. So it's either talk or music? Or well, both. they offer a plan <coughs> which allows you an add-on for licensing. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm just sitting behind a microphone recording talk programs, there's no licensing involved in that. For, for music? Because you're not to... using any music. Yeah. Now, um, there is some cases <coughs> you, know, you might ask, oh, well, talk radio still has music intros, stuff like that. You can purchase um, like royalty free, mu free music and just packs and stuff. It's a lot cheaper. You know that's that's so, the way so you can you can you use that. Can't you play 45, the first 45 seconds without getting a license? It's a little bit different with internet radio than uh, yeah. yeah. You've got it's based off of sessions, um, and that's a little bit more complicated. Typically, sessions are considered the first five to ten seconds, um, and you get one session listening for that. Um, but it's typically, what I, my rule of thumb is, is if I'm playing it on there, I'm paying for it. So um, if, I, if I play it, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to try to get into the nitty-gritty of whether I owe for that or not. Um, but on talk radio, you know, there's a lot of different websites. For instance, um, audiojungle.com um, allows you to purchase music um, that you can use whenever you want. There's no licensing as long as you purchase it and they're pretty affordable. You can get like a whole album for like ten dollars. And they've got a whole range of, you know, all different kinds of stuff you can use for intros, extros, all different kind of stuff. And all you do is you just program your talk programs on and you don't have to worry about licensing. Now he brought up the thirty nine dollars. That's what that's for. Um, if you wanted the music licensing package because you wanted to play a lot of music like we do, ninety 80% of our content is music. We have to have that. We pay the additional. What was that website? Live365.com. No, the Audio, Audio Jungle. Jungle? Audiojungle.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you can kind of structure it depending upon what kind of station that you want, okay, from that. But you do have to kind of make a choice. But again, you know, $65 a month to be able to play anything is not a large amount of money when you think about it from a radio perspective. The other thing we find is there are some differences between the rules of a normal radio station and from an internet radio station. And uh, their pricing structured totally different differently. and some rules on how you do certain things. So you have to kind of study those subtleties out uh, to know the difference. Now, if you're a regular radio station and have a web presence, you can do things on the web that maybe we couldn't do because we don't have a territory radio station. We don't have a tower. We don't have a tower. But if you have a tower, it, your gateway, it, you're, they're a little more lenient on you. You could do on the web what you're doing you know, through the tower. So we're, we're finding that's necessarily true on that. And, and audiojungle.net. Sorry about that, yeah. Um, one thing to note, though, if you do already have 
an FM station, a station with a tower, that means you luckily fall under the requirements of an FM station. So if you do wish to stream online, actually all you have to do is go to Live365, plug your stuff in, and, nothing, and that's it. Um, a lot of the metadata and stuff, you don't have to deal with it. In fact, I would, you don't even have to go with Live365. You can go with a company like, um, oh, let me go back here, like uh, shoutcheap.com, wave streaming, five or $10 a month, they just give you the physical audio streaming. That's all, that's all they give you. All you gotta do is plug your FM station right into that, and that's all you've gotta do, because you're already paying licensing fees. Um, so the government's not gonna pay you licensing fees on and above it, which is great. Um, they've got it structured that way now, they're trying to take it away, so you pay on both sides, of course, but there's, there's been a big debate about that, but I'm not gonna get into that. That's not what we're talking about. Okay. Um, essentially, we're just about at the end. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's look at this sheet again where we were at, where it says station setup. We're going to look at some cost, okay? Yes, sir. One quick question. Yeah. Who sets up the search terms so they can find your station? It depends how you're on the internet, on the web. Um, if you're with Live 365, they've got a really well indexed directory. Um, you know, for instance, you stream gospel music. You know, someone types in gospel music, et cetera, et cetera. Yours may show up if it fits their search terms. Um, they have a, so you tell them basically what your station is. Exactly. You fill out a title, a description, um, your genre, a few key tags, and that sets your, your information. And then if people search based on that, you're often to find it. Life365 is a pretty big company. Um, they stream like between three and 6,000 radio stations. And a, lot of search, and a lot of search engines already have them there. So it'll go through and look through them and bring your name up. Okay. But um, if you also have like a website, um, that, would, that would be something you know, we're not going to get into because that would be a lot more technical. But essentially, you would talk to your, whoever's doing your website, tell them you want to set up the metadata for that station. Um, and when they do a why Google search, it why don't you go to our web, let them see our website there real quick? Okay. Uh, let's go over cost here real quick. Uh, and this, if you were starting from scratch, okay, this is uh, for a website domain name. It's going to roughly cost you about fifteen bucks a month, okay. Uh, inter now the internet, depending upon how you want to do this, it, it can variable cost depend upon where you're at, okay. Uh, I know what we're paying for internet's 90 bucks a month. You might pay $30 a month where you're at and get fiber twice as good as ours. In Knoxville, because um, it's a lot more metropolitan area, the, my friends who go to school with me get the same speed for 40 to 60 bucks a month. Yeah. Just because I live out in... We Timber have found out that Chattanooga is one of the better places to have internet access. They are one of the fastest and the cheapest is in the Chattanooga right. area. But we don't live in the Chattanooga area. Yeah, so it we, doesn't matter. We host ours out in the cloud, and we go through a service where we do what they call a dedicated server. That means we have physical hardware at somebody's place. They take care of it. They take care of the software. They take care of updates. They take care of the backbone of the Internet to that system and everything. <coughs> I just pay them a flat rate, and I don't have to mess with it. That's costing us about $50 a month. 60 Sixty? Oh, yeah. excuse me. Dyslexia. Sixty dollars a month. We have found it works better with a physical server than what they call a virtual server. We had issues with virtual servers. So if you do decide to do that, you do want a physical server. Uh, we can actually give you some websites that's available where we use services like that. The software, Sam Broadcaster, cost us about three hundred dollars. Uh, is what we paid but you purchase the software, you own it. Uh, streaming service, it's gonna cost you about $10 a month. That $300 is a one-time fee, by the way. That's not 300 a month. Uh, music <laughs> license, the music license uh, is about 150 a month. Um, that's, that's if you do direct. Okay, if you do it direct, like if you went to BMI and all of them, it's gonna cost you about $150 a month. Through Live 365, you'll get some, your streaming and your music licenses for about $120 a month. So it's actually cheaper going through Live 365. Um, to get your music, 
like us, what we do, we found out it was cheaper just to go to like McKay's bookstore, buy used CDs, and pulled it off the CDs. That was the cheapest way. There's not really a good place where you can get Christian music in bulk. Uh, but once you get those, and then you can subscribe to these services where you get the new stuff, which doesn't cost you any money, uh, that's pretty good. And it depends upon what you, what, what you want to spend, how much music you want to have, how, how many... How many songs we have now? Uh, our rotation tracks. is like only like 150 tracks. So, you know, 150, 200 tracks, you can really do your rotation and meet your needs. Uh, the, yes. Sorry, when, go ahead. When you rip the software, mm -hmm. when you run it through something like Audacity to compress it and amplify it and make it. <coughs> um, we don't because we, all of our music is from um, professional companies who know what they're doing. All right. Um, you just tell them what yeah, so I just throw it in the track. Now, I do have some audio effects on the <coughs> Sam Broadcaster software, but that's minimal. You probably wouldn't even really tell the difference. Um, that just compresses my final output, but that's not super important. Yeah, well, um, I, use a, a, I actually use a gate. Um, I actually don't compress it because it's already pre-compressed. I just gate it so I can get as much power. Okay, what's the audio equipment? Um, that's just like if they wanted a microphone. Oh, okay. Face, stuff like if that. you wanted to put a microphone in so you can do um, live stuff, you know, we, we said roughly $300. That's buying a real decent microphone. Yeah, you can buy a good microphone, a studio quality for about $100 today. I mean, you know, shoot. The, even the less than that, even less than that, uh, if you go to Musician's Friend or Sweetwater.com, uh, you can buy your uh, microphone equipment pretty inexpensive there. And you can actually buy a cable now, an XLR cable to USB, USB and you can just plug it right into your laptop. <clears throat> and you can do your recording um, um, that direction, right onto the laptop. Um, uh, what about uh, at your church? If you have good sound equipment at your Absolutely. Church, it's you fine. Good if you got stuff, use it. Yeah. Okay? Uh, this is, way, yeah. You know, right. Like at our church, we, you know, we have a retired electrical engineer and type person who does our sound and everything. So you go and buy the two Well, you, you take advantage right. of everything right. you can uh, and, and use whatever you can without buying it. And it, it'll save you money. But I'm just saying, starting from scratch, if I had to do this, this is what it's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. uh, roughly right now, um, we figured out our cost a year, it's costing us about $3,000 a year to run our radio wow. station. Yeah. Roughly. About 2400 just for the stuff listed. Right. But, uh, but we figure we're spending about 3000 a year. Because we, okay. we also, we have a little bit larger website, stuff, stuff that's not really pertinent to this right. that we also run. We've, been, uh, we've gotten as high as 800 no, in no, a no, month. No, 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 we've gotten as high Was as 1500 Was it that high? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because remember when we started playing Overridge? Oh, yeah, that's right. We've gotten as high as 1,500. Total listening hours? Total listening hours, but we went through a period of time where we had some technical issues with the virtual servers, and we had dropouts and things like that. By the time we got that fixed, we did lose audience. And if you have dropouts, you will lose audience, and it's hard to get them back. How does that number equate with this? Um, like 1,500 total listening hours, what does that mean? Is that what you're asking? No, that's not hits. Well, that, let me give you an example. Um, one total listening hour would be me tuning into the station for one hour. So that's 1,500 hours thrown out. We, get, we launch about two or 3,000 streams a month, um, probably closer to 3,000 3, because it's less than about 30 minutes per session. Right. Is what they, that's what about an average internet radio Because somebody is. might log in and be on for five minutes and that's it. But that's going to be logged as a hit, you know. Right. So, so from that perspective. But right now our average listener is listening for about 30 minutes at a time. Yeah. And, and that would be about right if they're in a car or someplace like that going somewhere. It's rare you're going to see people listening to you eight hours in a day. You know, that, that's rare. That, no radio station gets that. Radio station would be lucky to get that. Yeah. Good point. Um, first of all, um, Live Through 65 does a lot of, has a lot of promotion in itself. We get a lot of our listeners just through their platform. People who just want to listen to a radio, they go to that and they happen to see our station. Oh, you've got a cool station. We also do a lot of um, Facebook advertising. Um, 
That does cost money. I, it actually works a lot better than, for instance, Google AdWords or something of that nature. But we advertise on Facebook. Anytime we meet anybody, we hand out these cards, that kind of stuff like that. I mean, pretty grassroots basic, just telling people about it. Um, we haven't hit it as hard as we've wanted to. We've wanted to really get the station to a quality we liked it. But um, we've seen it grow pretty substantially. Right. And right now, it's probably we feel comfortable that we could depend on it, you know, because we were having some issues. I think we've got all that worked out, and it's been running great for the last, you know, several weeks. We haven't seen any drops, any or anything. So I think we've solved our technical problems. And uh, that, folks, in itself is worth money to you, you know, because we, we have found what works, what doesn't work, it seems like. And, uh, you know, it's taken us two years to really go through that process. So just to think that you're going to go out and get a radio station up and running in about 30 days and never have a problem, that's, that's not going to happen. Um, so, so there's always issues somewhere along the route. And if the Internet goes down, what can we do? Nothing. You know, if, if, you lo if half, a, half the country goes down, there's nothing you can do with that. You just do the best you can. But with the Internet, we can go around the world. We're not stuck with the United States or our state or our local community. We're hitting about 32 different countries right now. We have been in China. I think they block us now. But uh, we have been in China. We have been in... Um, Tehran and those areas in the Middle East, uh, we've got people listening there that are actually listening. A lot of third world countries have better internet than they do phone service. So internet is the way to go. Uh, most of your teens and young people listen to the internet. They don't buy cable. They don't watch cable. They don't watch uh, TV. satellite TV or it's anything. They're, they're going all over the web and that's why we chose web as the way to go, because that's the future. That's where everything's going to be. Does, does your station give you data then? I mean, how are you learning? Yes. Yeah. I can show you, actually, if you like. Yeah, we get, we get feedback from Live 365 that tells us. Yeah, I mean, it's very important, because th that, that helps you target your station, exactly what you want to do. Let me log in here real quick. <clears throat> Sometime today. <laughs> get to that in just a minute just trying to be efficient be efficient and have you found any particular type of programming is more well liked versus other okay. um our uh oh okay here it is sorry it showed up my screen um what works well is okay you may have you may have did i listen yeah on this workshop Worksheet here, there's a few lists of stuff. Um, content sources, minute. amazing facts, that's been pretty good. It is written. Uh, we don't have any 3ABN radio affiliate stuff, but that's a good place to get stuff. Your Story Hour and the Skit Guys. The Skit Guys is actually a company um, in. These are successful Yes, yes, yes. Um, some very successful mainstream programs, to give you an example, Adventures in Odyssey, um, they'll want you to pay money to get it. Um, we would like to do it, but our budget does not does not allow it. that. Okay. Most of my budget's coming out of my pocket, so I'm limited to what I can do. Uh, that's the reason we're working on the 501c3. If I can get that, uh, people have a tendency that they will fund you as long as they can get a tax write-off. That's what we've been finding. That's. In our area, when it, when it deals with, uh, especially with uh, teens, uh, teens don't generally give you the money. You have to go to older people that has the income source. Uh, it's a little different 
than just uh, a normal ministry to what we found. I mean, in the four years we've been doing that, that's what we found. Because most people have told us, you get your 501c3, we'll give you a substantial amount. That's what we've been told. Um, for the statistics, Life365 compiles all this data uh, whenever someone listens. Uh, you get total number of streams launched in a day, total listening hour for that day, um, the average time they listen for, uh, if they visit station page, um, the station presets, if people preset you, like favorite this station, um, your genre rank. So we're a Christian station, so we're about number 43 on Life 365 for Christian music. And there's about 2,000 uh, Christian stations. So um, we're ranked number 40 right now. Yeah. And then overall rank, we're about 2,200 out of about 7,000 stations, right. which is okay. We're, we're, we're getting there, I think. But um, it allows you to see the, the, all the, the stream amounts and everything. And then also, which, on, geo. what's really interesting is the geo, is I can go and look and see where I've got all my um, streams from. So in the United States, I have like almost 1,300, and then I've got about 10 or 15 in the next, these 10 countries that listen. And those go variable. Those change on a, on a monthly base, basis. They change all the time. And the countries come and go. It, it'll vary. It'll vary. Yep. The total listening hour for the month or for a certain for the month? For a thirty day period. Um it's for a thirty day period. Okay. Yeah. Is yeah. what it's for. Like this here, fifty one um, total listening hours in Wisconsin for a month. Um, our like our total listening hours forever since we've been on is oh man, twenty or thirty, maybe forty thousand, maybe. I don't know. I haven't even checked, but Anyway, that's, that's kind of what the stats you get. You also, this is what, Live, this is what uh, Life 365 gives you whenever you purchase your system. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty basic. It lets you fill out your description, keywords, and your basic ID for, for metadata and stuff like that, which is going to close that. Now, that kind of covers everything that we were going to talk about. One of the things we want to say is um, that's a lot to cover in a very short period of time, okay? And um, what we offer and what we would like to do or we can do, if you have a group of teens that are very interested in this, we'd be more than willing to come to your church. And we can actually do... Uh, we can do this on a weekend. We can, we'll come in and we'll do your church service and everything because what we'd like to do is speak to the older people of the church to try to let them know what we're, you know, you're wanting to do and try to get them to financially buy in to help these kids do what they're doing, okay? And then in the afternoon and everything, we'll meet with the kids and anybody that is welcome to come and we'll go through and do a lot of this. And if we've got time, we'll actually do some hands-on uh, showing them how to create IDs, how to create a program, how to put it together. Uh, the last church we went to, they only had one teen, and she was so concerned. She says, I hate the church spend this much money, you know, and I'll not be able to do this because it's just me. Uh, it doesn't matter how many kids you have. If you've got one, that's fine because we've already got a radio station going. If you don't think you can do the radio station, you can create content, and that's inexpensive. There's not a lot of money you have to outlay. And, and we've got to learn to crawl before we walk. And we've got to learn to walk before we run. Maybe we have to get our people to understand the power of radio. Exactly. We can't whip up an enthusiasm for their fan station. Or we've done a full power station. Those are right here. I mean, you know, this is one thing that I've noticed. Like when, we, when I first started doing it, I was kind of concerned about, oh, you know, not a lot of people are listening. You know, I'm not really doing what I supposed to, I'm supposed to be doing. But, you know, as I've gotten older and understand it, understanding doing this, I've realized that it's more important to reach out than to worry about all the numbers. Right. And, you know, uh, we're not we're, we're not a huge station. You know, we're we're not up here being these professional multi-million dollar billionaire station people. No, no, whoa. Uh, we, it's a small station, but it's something that reaches out and it works really great. Right. Exactly. And, that, and like I told Eric, I said, you know, this one lady in Russia, if that's the only person, if that's the only person that we reach, every bit of this has been worth it. Okay. It's by one by one. It's not by millions. 
And every person we reach is going to tell somebody else. And that's what's going to bring people into you. And it's very important that we do this because um, one of the statistics that I have in this sermon that I do is, unfortunately, as a church, we're kind of behind the times when it comes to technology and doing things out there. And, uh, and even the conference recognizes this. And um, they actually had a, the Wisconsin, it was either Michigan or Wisconsin, somewhere up in there, had a professional come in. And they told him that, uh, that actually at that time, this is like about mm, 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago. At that point, he estimated that as a church, we were about 25 years behind, okay, at that point. In technology. In, techno in the technology aspect, okay. Um, you go into other churches. You go into a Baptist church, you go look at what they've got sitting there. You go, you go find out in their youth rooms, they've got their own sound system, they've got their own uh, lighting system, they've got their own recording system, they've got the whole setup right there for the kids, and they run programs keeping these kids working there, okay? Because they found how important it is to get something of interest to these kids, and they create. Uh, I'm not saying we have to do that as a church. I'm just saying they're recognizing it. We as a church have got to recognize what do we got to do for these teens. Mm -hmm. And if we don't do that, uh, we're going to keep getting older. Right now, half the population in the United States of the Adventist church is 60 years of age or older. Yeah. Okay, so what is that telling you? Where is the church leadership going to come from in the next 20 years? Okay, it's not going to be there. And, and that's, the other, that's the other thing that comes through. Uh, as a church, you need to give a part of the church service to your young people. You give it to them, let them have ownership, and then you step back and you, don't, you, you bite your tongue. Okay? you got to do that because they've got to have ownership. And, uh, this is one excellent avenue to allow them to, that's right. to own something. And... Um, and that's the unfortunate part that we don't do very well. Uh, and I've experienced that in our own church. Um, very well have experienced that. And, uh, but uh, we've got to do everything we can to keep these kids within this church. Because if we don't get this youth back in, our church is going to, it just can't keep sustaining itself. Um, it, it just bothers me. I'm, I'm, so, I'm just telling you the way I feel. It just bothers me on that.